Okay, this is Gabriel Castro from exoticwoodpen.com. If you get a chance, check out my Facebook page, Gilded Age Pen. That's where this pen will be featured. And anyway, uh, with that, a uh, couple things to explain. Um, if you followed me before, you know that this is my generic mold that I use that I made out of just casting craft rubber. Had it for quite a while. Uh, this is the bottom. This is the top. We're going to cast the top first. And I made a few things because if I put that in there like that, wouldn't look very good, wouldn't cast very well. Uh, this is too big for both pieces to cast simultaneously. So I'm going to cast each one separately. Now how this is going to work, now you see I got some uh, black electrical tape here. That is because this whole, the drill bit that I had was three quarters of an inch and that was just a little too big by the time you chuck it in um, to get it in there. Even though this is 18 millimeters, three quarters of an inch versus 18 millimeters is actually smaller. But by the time this drills out, because of the, the way the spade bit splays out on the end, it's actually a bigger hole. So that's going to sit in there like that, hold it up. And that's kind of a tight fit, which is nice. And over here on this end, I have just something like that. This is These are just homemade Teflon scraps. Now to keep anything from going inside... I've got a Q-tip and I've got a little bit of mineral oil here and I'm just going to loosen those or lubricate those threads so that nothing binds to that when I cast it and I've never had a problem with it. It may seem a little strange but then we'll just thread that on there and none of the resin will get in there and fill, up, fill inside there. And I'm just going to push that in. No big deal. The process will be the same for the body also. I have the exact same thing here for the, this is tapped out to receive that. And then I'll just use the same piece on the end rather than making this video longer and then showing you how I cast both pieces. I'm just going to cast one on camera and it's the same process both ways. So off camera I'm mixing about four ounces. Just vigorously mixing it making sure it's thoroughly mixed and then I'm going to pour that over it but I am not going to put this one in a pressure pot because all the bubbles are going to rise and that is why I sealed everything first so that in theory I shouldn't have a problem with any air bubbles being that I don't have a pressure pot this is the way I've always done it before I started making my steampunk tools. Now, I'm probably going to have to add a little more because that is going to seep through this way here. So I'm going to have to add another ounce and a half, maybe. Okay, that was seven ounces of fluid. Now we'll just let that cure overnight, and then I'll pour the other one. And then after that, we'll come back to the video. You can see I have my clip made and these the blanks have been cast cured for several days and first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these to the grinder 
and then we're going to relieve the edges. Okay, so we switched this around. I've got the my mandrel in there, and of course, like I said earlier, this holds the cap. So we're just gonna thread that cap on there. That's a, a double start, 14 millimeter also. Gonna tight, and then put the live center on the back end. Make sure it's tight on that. Again, you can see how the edges have been relieved. That's so we won't get any chip out, tear out in big pieces when this is being turned down. And I'm going to my round carbide to turn this. This side looks pretty good. So what I need to do is just clear this out real quick. And then I'm gonna seal that with some uh, CA glue. I'm gonna pour it in place and let it soak and cure overnight and then refinish turning it tomorrow. Okay, so basically I'm going to put a blue shop towel underneath to catch any drips. going to pour in a liberal amount of that stuff and let it work its way in there. Now this is about the consistency of a medium now, but I would prefer using a thin. I'm just going to let that work and soak in. And you could use a uh, a nice glue a super glue would work just as well probably would work better than than this older thin CA which is like I said about the consistency of a medium so we'll see how that does we'll just let that soak in overnight and then we'll put that back on the lathe tomorrow Okay, this is loosened up. I'm just gonna flip that around, insert that. So it's kind of tight. And again, that's threaded there to accept the body. And I use the same double start on that. 14 millimeter.
Okay, that turned out pretty good. There's no gaps on either side. So that's pretty promising. I got the cap mounted on here and I just cleaned it up a little bit. It's still really thick here in the middle. And unfortunately, I didn't get a measurement before we started, so I'm just gonna have to eyeball this. And um, I've still probably got about a millimeter or so thickness of uh, acrylic between um, the top and the nibs underneath. And unfortunately, when I was, when I cast this, I should have used a pressure pot. I've got a lot of little air bubbles which is something I really wasn't expecting on getting. Um, I've done it many, many times using this PR. So, um, and I haven't had any trouble with air bubbles. This time I, I did. So it's unfortunate, but I'm not gonna melt it down and start over. I'm just gonna push ahead with it and call that one a learning experience. So the next one I do I will use my pressure tank. So this right here is the distance I'm going to use from my clip. Let me see if I can get hold that right there. And I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch on top above that. Um, and then I'm going to round this portion over right there. Let's see if you can see that or not. And anyway, um, and I still have to contour that, so that'll work out. It's probably, I might remake that and make it a little bit longer. This is probably a little bit longer than I want it, but it's okay being that this is just another prototype and everything, all my mistakes that I made on this one, I can change on the next one I make. So anyway, we'll just go ahead and uh, finish shaping this down removing a lot of that waste right there and i'm using carbide for that So there's going to be a lot of starting and stopping and anyway you get the idea it's just a matter of starting and stopping and checking for thickness and I'm going to do this off camera and then I'll come back to it when it's finished. Okay so I started sanding it down just a little bit so I can see how much material there is and that's about as far down as I want to go. Now I can just start wet sanding it. And then before I do that, I'll turn the other part down. But the process is pretty much the same. I just loosened up this right here. So we're just going to loosen that up. And I'm not going to cut that off until we start wet sanding it down. So I'm just going to unscrew this. And then I'm going to reverse this. This goes in because that's tapped. Or okay, I got the body remounted now. And if you can see that little black dot right there, that was uh, something that got in my casting that I didn't see until I turned that down. So anyway, um, sometimes things happen, no big deal. And then I'm going to, since this is the bottom of the, uh, the pen, I'm going to cut it off right about a quarter of an inch down. So I'm just going to eyeball that and mark that one when I, as I cut it.
as far as I want to go with taking uh, off of there so I'm just gonna shape it I'm gonna probably gonna remove actually quite a bit with just sandpaper but I'm not gonna hit it with any more tools I want to get rid of all the tool marks and then that'll take me down probably another uh, half a millimeter or so but we'll just do that with sandpaper and then we'll wet polish that and I'll do that off camera okay so this is the bottom half of the pen or the body this is the cap and you can see this is the section that I have same material the red ebonite and if you've never done this make sure that this matches the same inside diameter or smaller to fit the inside of the cap see like this is a 3364 on the inside diameter this is a half an inch, so it's a little bit smaller, so that will fit. And you can see the, the shape of that and how that's going to look roughly once I clip off the ends and then add the cap. And then uh, I'm just going to go ahead and wet sand that. That's a long process, and I'm just going to do that off the camera. I'm using micro mesh and um, you'll see what it looks like when it's finished. This is about halfway through the cap so far. It's starting to look pretty decent. A lot of air bubbles though. Okay, so there is the cap. That looks good. Let's get a closer look. Then I'll wash this out afterwards. You can see the little air bubbles, minute ones. There's a lot more right there, but that's okay. Good learning experience. Next time I'll use the pressure pot or tank in my case, because I don't have a pressure pot. And then we'll do the body next. Okay, we've got the body in here next, and you can see that little chip right there, and a lot of air bubbles. So I've got this in here, and one good thing about ebonite, and threaded into ebonite, is it has a really good grip. It's not like metal where it's really loose. I can leave this back a little bit. I leave a little bit of gap right here, instead of it, you know, being all the way screwed in. If I leave a gap, when I sand that, I can remove that little bit of a rough edge so it's nice and smooth and anyway that just makes it a lot easier when you're finishing so we'll go ahead and get that started now with the wet sanding looks like I got a little crack here too or something well we'll see what it looks like when I sand that out and uh, again we're gonna start out with the 1500 work our way through the grits all the way down up to uh, 12,000 and it's just a long clock okay this is halfway through that's not looking too bad except for the bubbles in that chip okay there's the principal part of the body done so next I need to remove this 
and then I want to try and just do that little bit of an edge right there it's probably not worth doing but it would drive me crazy I don't know if I can actually do a decent job on that but I'm gonna go ahead and chuck that in by itself with a different size diameter insert okay I've got this inserted in here just using a 5 8 insert and then I'm just gonna just try and just touch the edge of that and see if I can't do something with it and we'll see what that looks like in a few well that didn't sand out too well I didn't want to put too much pressure on it and have it slip and go into the threads but it does look better than it did but you can see how crappy that looks so next time I will use a pressure pot ordinarily I would just uh, throw this whole thing inside the acetone but I'm afraid the acetone would eat up the ebonite so I'm not gonna take that chance so anyway um, this one would just be a keeper not a seller but it was a good learning experience okay a slight modification uh, I had to redrill this hole out to fit it was a 29 64 and you can see how that just screws itself right in there really nicely nice and tight now it's leak proof now I can just fill this up directly without having to use a converter or cartridges now this will use either one con one converter or it will hold two cartridges and I haven't figured out how much fluid yet, but the reservoir is, goes down to about here. So that'll hold um, more than this right here as far as fluid goes, being that it's three-eighths of diameter. I'll measure that out and uh, play with that, and we'll see how it goes.